This is Healthcare's Missing Logic Podcast, episode number 178. Today, our special guest is Amy Shepard. Amy is a certified Enneagram coach, and she shares how applying the Enneagram to yourself as a leader and your team helps you stay strong and aligned. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Healthcare's Missing Logic Podcast. This is the only podcast that shows you how to leverage polarity intelligence, an essential competency for healthcare leaders, and the missing logic in healthcare, so you can create healthy healing organizations and become a thriving, resilient, and unstoppable healthcare leader. We are your hosts, Tracy Christofferson and Michelle Troset. We've been best friends and colleagues for over 30 years. And during that time, we coached healthcare leaders across North America around how to create healthy healing organizations. Today, we coach healthcare leaders and leadership teams to live thriving, resilient, and balanced lives, combat burnout, and create the best places to give and receive care. This podcast is for the unsung hero of healthcare, the healthcare leader. We want you to know we see you and we'll be here for you each week. In this podcast, We're going to challenge healthcare's industry norms, flip limiting beliefs, and share proven strategies so you can be your best self at working at home, live and lead intentionally, and experience well-being and joy. We are glad you are here and look forward to sharing the journey with you. If you aren't totally convinced this podcast is for you, just listen to a few episodes and convince yourself. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Healthcare's Missing Logic Podcast. This is Tracy. And it is Michelle. Here we are. Happy, laughing. What a great episode. Oh, man. <laughs> we had the laughing endorphins rolling on this one. We did. We did. Oh, it was amazing. It was really fun. Yeah. This is a fun episode. Yeah, we learned a lot. Uh, we learned a lot about the Enneagram, and we learned some more about each other. Yeah, well, and validation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> validation of our experience of each other, I think. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. That's it was right. great. So we asked uh, a colleague and a friend um, who's doing incredible work with the Enneagram with her clients to join us for a conversation today. And it really aligns with the work we do with healthcare leaders, with being personally aligned with their strengths and knowing themselves and it was enlightening and we can't wait for you to listen to it. <laughs> yeah. And I think, you know, in the past, I think, I think maybe I struggled a little bit with a compl- how complex it can get mm-hmm. when you're looking at this assessment of yourself. But then I just, I just loved how Amy made it simple and just yes. kind of brought it to life a little bit differently for us. And that was really refreshing and just kind of enlightening. So I, I love that. She did a great job. Yeah, she sure did. She sure knows her Enneagram. <laughs> <laughs> so let us tell you a little bit about Amy, and then we'll go on to the podcast interview. So uh, Amy Shepard is a certified Enneagram coach and facilitator. She has spent decades applying the Enneagram to facilitate the success of leaders, teams, and organizations, and ensure that her client exper- clients experience immediate and long-lasting insights and growth. She draws upon extensive experience as an executive branding strategist, a global outreach leader, and a proven entrepreneur. As the founder of Venwise, Amy is committed to helping individuals, families, and teams thrive through courage, clarity, and communication. Without further ado, here is our conversation with Amy. Well, welcome Amy Shepard to Healthcare's Missing Logic podcast. Thank you. It is so lovely to be with you both today, Tracy and Michelle. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Yeah, Yeah. we we have to. We have to. And the day is here. Woohoo. Let's get started. (laughs) (laughs) Let's dive in. Well, Amy, let's do it. Let's do it. And um, the first thing we want to ask you is we know that you have a lot of different experiences in your life. And so we would like to for you to tell our listeners a little bit about some of the highlights from your journey at this point of your life and kind of give us the highlights. Awesome. Great. Yes. I, um, I am currently a, an Enneagram coach. I coach leaders, executives, couples, and families, and, um, and also get into other entrepreneurial coaching with other modalities and things. But highlights of my life are, um, I am married with three kids. I was, for most of my career, a branding and marketing executive. 
both with um, as an entrepreneur and as I call an intrapreneur of leading other people's companies. And so, um, and but throughout my whole career, including um, a lot of big volunteer and global travel work with with teams around the world, I have always used the Enneagram. So for decades, I've been using it to make whatever teams I was leading stronger and everything. So then it became really natural to move into this phase of becoming yeah, an Enneagram coach. You've applied it and have lived it. Yeah. And we want to learn more about it. So perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a perfect, perfect. match, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and I think too, you know, we've been working with healthcare leaders ever since the beginning of the pandemic to really be thriving, resilient, unstoppable leaders. And as you may be aware, we have a framework, the dynamic balance effect framework that we use and really helping them to do that. And um, one of the pillars is personal alignment. And one of the things that we do in working with these leaders to help them thrive is to tap into their strengths, the things that are natural to them, that make their actions and behaviors easier. And the Enneagram is one of them that we have them assess and explore. And nice. um, so that's why we asked you to join us today. You know, So we can not only learn a little bit more, but our listeners can too. And and then uh, we can maybe even help our, our coaching uh, clients you know, even more with how they can leverage this as a mm-hmm. tool, right? And uh, and so help us, I mean, you've used it, you know, you said a lot in your, throughout your mm-hmm. career, but like, what were, why were you drawn to the Enneagram and what has been your experience that now has led you to be certified and really focus a lot of your work specifically on that and helping people use it? Well, I find that the Enneagram is almost like a neutral platform. It's a so it's an archetype, it's an ancient archetype system of nine different types. And what I love about it is that it's it's foundational but it's also kind of dynamic. So it really maps where do I move when I'm moving in my um growth and my health and where do I move in stress stress or disintegration. Um, and, and it really gets at then the interplay between people. So it's a great tool of self-discovery, but it's a really a great way to gain compassion and understanding and communicate well with others. So um, I, I just find it's one of those tools that you can, you know, get in the blink of an eye and you're like, oh, I feel seen and, and and I know myself better, but then you can also continue to use it as such a valuable tool as you go deeper and deeper into yourself and to, into your relationships. Oh, yeah, I love that. And I, a couple of things that you said that just really struck me. One is dynamic. And that's what we're teaching, right, is dynamic it. balance. So it mm-hmm. is all about flow. It's not about static, right? And it is about growth. And yes. then the other thing that you said, just know yourself better. And I mm-hmm. think that's just so important for individuals, especially leaders. And, you know, it's just all about who am I? (laughs) How did I get to be here? And so we don't shame ourselves or, right, beat ourselves up or think we got to be fixed, but just to know ourselves so that we can understand our behavior sometimes and why we react the way we do. And I love Mm -hmm. that. I love that. That's so cool. I I think you're right on. And that really um, allows us to put our energy to constructive things. So rather than shaming ourselves, which is just a black hole of, of nothingness. And, and many times when people learn their true Enneagram type, they actually do feel shame for a moment. And sometimes we say like, when you learn your type, that's, and you feel that minute of like, Ooh, that's how you kind of know it's your type. For instance, I'm an eight, so I'm a challenger, but, and even in my, you know, leadership roles. I've always tried to hold myself back. I've always been told I'm a little too much. And um, and so I've always tried to change that about myself. And then when I learned about the Enneagram and learned who I am, I was like, well, let's go, right? Like there's a place <laughs> for me in the world and there's a place for the other eight types too. And together, if we're all living in our power and our strengths as our truest selves, like we can accomplish amazing things without the shame and trying to change ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Tracy, I always say things get so much easier when you lead with your strengths. When when you are really yes. that innate who you are, things just get easier. So 
Yeah, and I and I love what you just said about there's room for all of us. Yes. Yes. And so not not hiding from what your true nature is. Right. And I think too, knowing there's a span, like, you know, it, it's mm-hmm. where you are when you're at the peak of leveraging everything you are and where you are when you are experiencing situations that are more stressful or causing, you know, yeah. um, maybe you're in the midst of big change or right how mm-hmm. you're going to respond and why you respond that way. Yes. Um, and I think I love that. It's not, it's not black or white. It's not either or it's both and mm-hmm. right. It truly is. And and when you are responding to stress in certain ways, the Enneagram really becomes kind of the rumble strips to keep you mm-hmm. on your path. Um, you know, I always tell my clients, like, you don't have to believe everything you think. And I know when I get in an unhealthy unhe- situation or in a stressful situation, especially with the team, sometimes I can shove everyone else down and kind of be like, forget it. I'll do it all myself. Right. Like, like I, I, I elevate myself above others and I'll do anything to succeed. And, and I used to think that was kind of okay. And in marketing and advertising and branding, that was, that was uh, rewarded. Right. And, but now I realize actually that's such an unhealthy thought, but it's a classic eight thought. Um, And so, so now when I hear it in my head, I'm like, Actually, what I need is to go take a walk around the block, get a drink of water, maybe have a granola bar, and let's do this again, right? And so the Enneagram really helps us have even those short little things in my head, in our heads. Um, Mm -hmm. And it it helps so much. My husband's a two, and twos think other people can read their minds. And so he just, it's just an extra catch (laughs) for him to be like, oh, I actually have to communicate what I'm saying, what I'm thinking. Yeah. So it's powerful for that. Yeah, yeah. And and just think about when you don't know that about somebody and there are two, yes. right? Then there's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of frustration on both because sides. Because you don't know that about yeah. them, yes. right? right? And so you don't know how you and, have to adapt yourself to be mm-hmm. with them and in relationship with them and understand them as well as you understand yourself. Yeah. So powerful. Yeah. It really it is. It is powerful. <laughs> it diffuses the situation, right? So when I know this is where someone else goes uh-huh. and they know it too, I can just say, hey, we can't read your minds. Can you just let us know? And they don't have to get defensive. They can just be like, oh, you're right. I'm doing that thing again. Yeah. You know, yeah. We all have strengths yeah. and weaknesses, right? Yep, absolutely. Oh, I don't know. I'm just yeah. full of strengths. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me later, Amy. <laughs> That's my three. <laughs> That's her three. I wasn't That's going to friend. say it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we know. (laughs) Well, you've already alluded to how important it is for you to know your Enneagram individually, um, but also in teamwork and teams. And of course, we work with leaders and leaders have teams. So we we hear all the time the dynamics between leaders and their teams. Mm -hmm. So tell us what are the benefits of not only knowing your strength as a leader, but the Enneagram of your teams and how you've helped people leverage that? Yes. So it's so powerful, both from a a proactive standpoint and even a reactive standpoint, right? We often think of leading teams reactively, but leaders are constantly choosing certain people for key projects and everything. So you're constantly, even within your larger team, building smaller teams. And what I love when we know everyone's Enneagram type on the team leaders can really look at it and decide, oh, we don't have someone, we might have a lot of creatives here, but maybe we need more of an investigator here. Or maybe we need that peacekeeper or or someone else who might be quiet most of the time, but man, when they talk, everyone needs to listen. And those six words they say are the words we need to hear, right? And so so leaders can really look at what their objectives are before they're trying to build a team and then pull those personality types in to create such a strong network. And then from a leadership and management standpoint, it's incredible. So when I know people's um, core fears, their core desires, their core longings, I can really just shift my language to them a little bit to understand what's what's the nugget they need to either boost them up a little bit or to challenge them to keep growing 
So we just learn little, you know, it's just a slight shift with people, but but boy, you can really understand how one type will respond to something and leap into it and another type might back off. Or who's that person that after a meeting you might need to say, hey, you know, how did you feel in there? And maybe you didn't want to talk in front of everyone. Or do you need 24 hours to go research this a little bit more? Before, Do you need more facts because you're a head type versus a gut type or a heart type? And you need to kind of have some more time to research. So it's really, it, it truly is like an instruction book for for people. It's powerful. <laughs> it kind of makes you wish there was little clouds over everyone's head. <laughs> Wouldn't there any of yes. would make it so much easier, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. I have Maybe we can create teams that. and been in meetings where people have their their type and their number. And when I do team building, you know, we kind of do put that on people, not to label, right? But so that you can automatically yes. say, oh, th- this is you know, this is how this person is and this is why they're the way they are in all the best ways, in all the strengths and the things that make us rich and unique. So it's really exciting stuff. Yeah, it is. It is. And I, I'm so glad you said that not to label because I think sometimes people are fearful of doing assessments like this because they will get labeled or pigeonholed into this is who you are, right? And Yes. And especially if they're still a bit uncomfortable with what that means, um, then they're hesitant to do that, right? And mm-hmm. so I think it's so important yes. what you bring out. It's not about labeling. It's just really about understanding and knowing. It's so true, Tracy. And and I always um, tell my clients, one, like the Enneagram is not meant to be a sword, right? You're not supposed to be like, oh, you're a nine and you need to step it up, right? <laughs> Nor is it a shield. So so me as an eight, the you know bull in the china shop, I can't say like, oh, well, I'm sorry you hurt, I hurt your feelings. I'm just an eight and I'm trying to get things done, right? <laughs> but it's also not a club. So sometimes yeah. when some, it can become an exclusive club where if some people in the group, some people, you know, naturally want to go deeper and deeper into it and they know everything about it. And then they start using kind of shorthand with each other, right? So not just labeling others, but also being like, oh, well, Michelle, you know how those threes are. So, you know, and you, you know, so you do, it's a powerful tool, but like any powerful tool, you really have to use it carefully and sensitively with people. Yes. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So and it, that, it's great. Yeah. And I think that's, that's really important. And that the, the other thing that you said that just kind of struck me too, is, you know, there's a lot to this. And I've, I've felt this like, yes. wow, this can be simple and very complex. Mm-hmm. And if you're running, and, you know, a lot of the leaders we work with, they might have 50 people or more on their team. Right. How yeah. am I ever going to know this about all the people I work with. So do you have any thoughts about that? I just thought while I was thinking about it, I'd ask like, because to me that could be like a barrier, right? To people even going down this road. So how do you manage that, Amy? Yeah, I think what's really important is to understand how diverse, how rich and diverse we all are, how different things make us tick. And so even, you're, you're absolutely right. Teams are large. Teams shift all the time really uh, any leader of a of you know normal size organization is is going to have a hard time keeping up but what's really important is to understand we all come from different um let me say that again we all come from different areas even in our bodies we all have different instincts of how we respond to things so there are three triads in the enneagram of the head heart and gut um and there are different Um, kind of weaknesses of each of those type. And we can get into that in a little bit. And so, but even just to understand my core longing is not someone else's core longing and somebody might be responding. I can't assume how that people respond, you know, in a certain way. So we call it a suicide, which I don't love that term, (laughs) but, um, but really it's when are you committing a suicide And assuming that you understand why someone else is reacting the way they are. And so as I teach the Enneagram, I also teach those tools of 
helping people become aware and just holding those different types. And honestly, you can start to test with people. So even when you don't know someone's type, if you're in a management situation and you're being challenged by like, why do I not seem to be connecting with this person? If you literally know like, oh, I could try to, you know, kind of build them up in this way. But if they don't respond to that, I can try to build them up in this way and see what makes them come alive. So it's really pretty simple, even when you don't know people's types, as long as you know what they might be thinking and what they might be desiring and how to just kind of, it's, you know, it's not manipulation. It's really Mm -hmm. just giving them what they most want to need to hear in a healthy, challenging way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And your intention is good. You know, you're just trying to bring it out, right? Yeah. Yeah, You're just trying to discover more about them. Yeah. 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 Well, we just thought we'd have a little fun today with this because (laughs) that's just who we are. (laughs) So in full disclosure, right? Uh, we're going to share our top Enneagram, and I think we've already done that. Like, I'm a, I'm a three, and Michelle is a seven, mm-hmm. and, um, and we, are, we couldn't be more opposite in almost every personality assessment we've ever done. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, um, and so we just thought we'd get your perspective. Like, if you had a three and a seven and you were working with mm-hmm. them as partners or a team... What do you Mm -hmm. think are some of the best ways that individuals in with these particular characteristics could work together? What might be the challenges they would experience Mm -hmm. that they might need to, you know, think about as they try to communicate and and relate to each other? Well, and then we'll tell you how we are or aren't doing that. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So I love this. I always love helping people understand um, what they need to be aware of as a partnership, what they can build upon and what they can bond over. So those are always my kind of three steps when I take people together um, and, and when I know their types. So first of all, really what threes and sevens can bond over is that, so So tell me if I'm right, but threes and sevens are really one of those dynamic duels, duos who can just conquer the world. Like I, any goal you two set for yourselves, I imagine you're great at like pushing for it, building each other up for it and, and really achieving it. So threes and sevens are, you're just a dynamic duo. So when I learned your types, I was kind of like, of course, that's what they are, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> so, and probably what's interesting, you say that you're, you show up differently on every personality type and everything, but the world might perceive you as being very similar, I would guess. Mm. Do you think that that's true? Do you think people on the outside see you similarly? I think they see the synergy. Yes. 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 So and therefore that's, they that's see a, us, they kind of see us as one. One. Yes. Yes. Because we feed off of each other, because we leverage yes. it. We don't, we don't mm-hmm. show it as antagonistic, which it could right. be, right? Yeah. But we yes. leverage it. So then to your point, I think from that perspective, yeah, they see us as a cohesive unit as one is, yeah. And I, I yeah. also could see where when people first meet us, that may be an, an initial thought, but as they mm-hmm. get to know us, our personalities come out and our styles come out and yeah. Yes. Yes. But I would think the, the commonality is that synergy and that energy and that drive. Like, yeah, like I, I would expect that neither of you really uh, slows down much before a challenge. You, you you know, you'll approach it in different ways, but you're going to clear that hurdle, you know, probably linking arms with a (laughs) glass of wine in your (laughs) (laughs) hand. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yep. Make or it champagne. Look good. <laughs> or champagne. We, we like to celebrate a lot. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. <laughs> and that's right. That's very common of the threes and sevens. But threes and sevens are motivated by different things. So threes, and, and you, it's really just kind of a twist on the facet that you're looking through. Mm-hmm. Um, threes love to be highly successful and um, and also kind of always have that voice in the back of their head that says, 
how is someone perceiving me? So threes are always kind of reading the room and thinking, am I being perceived the way I want to design this interaction? Um, threes are also very, so, so threes are known as the successful achiever, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of one yeah. of the names given to the threes. Um, so that idea that threes want to be successful and they want to be perceived as being successful. So there are other types that want to be successful. They actually kind of don't care how they're perceived. But threes are like, wait a minute. Um, and so, so then sevens as the entertaining optimist. So sevens tend to be a little bit more of the cheerleader, a little bit more of the, hey, everybody having fun here. Let's just have, <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> How do you feel about that, Michelle? <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> my son's the podcast producer. He's over there. He's Lapping. stuck his head up. <laughs> That's my mom. <laughs> yep. Let's all yep. just have fun. <laughs> Let's all just have fun. So as threes, so where you might find yourself getting into trouble is threes are so driven and, and almost never satisfied. Right. Yep. So <laughs> there's always another level of yep. threes being achievement. <laughs> right. So sevens. But but let's face it. Achievement takes hard work and takes <laughs> going through the dark forest of yeah. figuring yes. things out and solving problems and sometimes admitting that something's broken that we need to fix. Well, sevens are really good at subconsciously reframing things. So sevens really, a weakness of a seven is they want to reframe things to be positive. But sometimes you do need to like, no, we need to see this as it really is. And we need to move it forward. <laughs> but if you're not, <laughs> but if you're not, if you haven't slept well, or you came to work on a Monday morning after fighting with your spouse over the weekend, right? You might be a little bit more vulnerable, a little bit more stressed or in a bad spot, right? So if you both come in, you know, together on a Monday morning, maybe both having had a bad <laughs> weekend for something. And, you know, so Tracy might be dissatisfied. She might come in and be like, what I know what I need to do today and that's achieve something to make, you know, to make things better. Well, Michelle's not really admitting that anything's broken. So then she sees that like, let's achieve, let's go as a threat that something's broken. And so, so what I do when I work with people is really kind of work on what's that dance we each do yep. with somebody else of like, well, you, we all know how it is, right? I feel this, then I act in this way, then my business partner, you know, responds in this way. And then it just, it's kind of this infinite loop. And so it's really powerful when you know each other's types mm -hmm. and, you know, and you're both laughing at each other, but, you know, <laughs> but Tracy, this may be a way for you to say like, uh, Michelle, I promise things will get better in just a little bit. Right. So yeah. she may need you to like, we just have to go through this but it's going to be better and we're both going to be successful and our clients will be successful if we go here. Right. Yeah. So she might need that assurance mm -hmm. um, or, or Michelle might need to say to Tracy, do you know what? We're doing fine. We're doing fine for a hot second. We don't have to fix things. Right. And so you can really learn mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. to assure each other and how to speak into each other and say, you are enough just the way you are, Tracy. It's okay. We're going mm -hmm. to be okay, right? And and Michelle might need to understand like it's it's okay that there's gray in here. It doesn't all have to be this shining white beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. How That's does so that funny. land with you? Oh, perfect, oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> We're just laughing because we just did our Q four planning, and it was just like <laughs> Michelle's all positive, and I'm like, here's what we got to do. A hundred percent. Yes. But I think what we've learned is, and we see it right away. Yep. Right. We have yes. the same, we have that now, even after this, 
she will walk away with a whole different story about this yes. than I will. Yes. Because of the context, because of the lens of how we're filtering what we're hearing, right? Yep. And so right. we've just become really aware of that, right? And we don't judge yes. that about no. each other, but we laugh. Like, right. We laugh a lot, a lot. We laugh at it a lot, right? Because yeah. this is just like, you know, like we, we evaluate our goals and Michelle's scores are always higher than mine, <laughs> right? <laughs> Because everything's great. We're doing wonderful, you know? And then I'm more I'm more critical evaluation of yes. what's going on, right? Oh, right. It's exactly. So true. Yeah. And you have you you have that trust and respect for each other. Yeah. And absolutely. So yeah. As you know, as organizational dynamics and leadership change, even with, with your clients, yeah. um, you know. To not have that basis of that trust, you can begin to empathize. Oh, how might someone who doesn't really know what, who doesn't trust someone else's agenda, how mm -hmm. might they perceive this type of thing? So it's oh, yeah. great that you guys have that, that trust and respect and friendship. Um, yeah. it, and so, it's priceless. We say that all the time. It's just priceless. Well, and there's a couple other I things it. I think that go along with this too, Amy, and I like your perspective on that. You know, the other things that we really, you know, core of our business are the polarities, are the dualities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And that, you know, it's not black and white. It's both. And, and there's, I have heavier, heavier masculine energy, Michelle, heavier yes. feminine energy, right? That yes. creative and, Right. And I'm more about the processes and the, you know, the actions. And so we know that we know that we have to have both, that there's a place for both, that it's not my way or her way. It's both ways and leveraging that. So we have that awareness. And then we also have a foundation in healthy relationships and yes. meaningful dialogue and how to have mm -hmm. hard conversations and how to be with each other and be candid and diplomatic. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. right. And so those foundations also help us sit in those moments of tension and right. just be with it and recognize what it is. Right. And, and honor each other in that and then talk about it. Mm -hmm. Right. And have the yeah. conversation about, okay, what did we just experience? You know, mm -hmm. like what is, what's happening? What's this about? And, um, and kind of just work through that and learn with each other. Right. Yeah. Where people that don't, to me, don't understand that it's a both and or don't have a mm -hmm. foundation of relationship principles that they can leverage or know how to be in meaningful, right. deep conversations with each other, vulnerable conversations with each other mm -hmm. can have more of a challenge. Would you, would you say that's also something you've seen in your work? It, it definitely is. But, but many times that is the environment we're in. Right. And so, yes, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone who doesn't aspire to all of those things you yeah. just listed, but we've all been in toxic or unhealthy or just incomplete uh, relationships or teams or dynamics, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so, so we, om it's almost like we each have to carry certain things around in ourselves to have a certain level of integrity and everything that we carry. And one of those might be curiosity about how people are different than we are. It might be deep appreciation for diversity in all types mm -hmm. to understand wow, I don't need 10 other people on my team who are my same Enneagram type or my same anything, right? In fact, I need to get curious and invite people to show up in all their quirkiness, in all their richness, because that's how we're really going to innovate. That's how we're really going to have empathy and compassion and, and change the things we all need to be changing in this world. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. That is really so important. And I just love looking at it through a different lens, you know, how to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. The Enneagram so, really teaches us, like, again, even if you don't know other people's types, when you know, oh, people have different uh, time stances. Some people live in the past and the present and the future, right? Some people um, react more out of shame or anxiety or f uh, fear. And so, you know, or anger, I mean, not fear. So shame, anxiety, and fear are where different people come from. And so if you can just hold that, we don't have to be judgmental or surprised. I feel like um, we can often spend so much time being surprised 
an energy being like, why did they react like that? Instead to just be like, well, of course they reacted in, in a way that's different than how I would have reacted. Like, let's go. Mm-hmm. That's what, yeah. that's what we should be wanting in each other. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yep. Yeah. 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 Great. Right. So what words of advice uh, would you give to our listeners who want to learn more about the Enneagram? Maybe maybe there's listeners out there that have never even heard of it before. And there may be yeah. some that, you know, have thought it's a little bit complex and I don't know mm-hmm. about it. What advice would you give to them to learn more? Well, first, to learn more, for, first of all, one thing about the Enneagram is it is an ancient Greek philosophy type of setting. So to me, some people make it spiritual, some people, you know, kind of tag it on to religious things, but it really is thousands of years old based on those archetypes. And so I think that there can be a um, just a kind of a passive trust in it, right? There's really no agenda to it other than clarity. And so, um, so my first advice is to trust it, but also like any of these things, it's not the only thing that makes you, you, or makes them, them, right? So, so to also use it as like, you're cleaning off the lens and you can see more clearly, but don't take it as, you know, complete truth and gospel, right? It's just a way to understand people more clearly. And also don't be intimidated by it, really. Um, like I have a free test link that people can go and take. And and so you can spend 20 minutes taking the test. It's about, any test is about, like any personality test is about 70 or 80% accurate. So it's, again, it's not completely going to nail you. But, um, but then they can spend another 10 or 20 minutes learning about themselves. And that might be it. So in under an hour, I guarantee you can have some ahas to simply another tool in your tool belt to go out in the world. And so that's such a great way to just enter into it. You don't need to be certified in it. You don't need a master's course, anything like that. (laughs) It's a really simple and accessible, insightful tool for people. Oh, that's perfect. It is. That is. Thank you so much for sharing that. At the end, we'll Tell our listeners how to, how to find your website so they can get access to that link. Yeah. 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 Well, now it's time for the missing questions. So we have oh. prepared a few questions for you that you don't even know what we're going to ask. <laughs> that you didn't prepare me for. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, so I'm going to ask you the first two, then Tracy's going to close this out, Amy. So one of the questions is, we know that you love nature and that you love to hike. So tell our listeners, uh, what's your best hiking experience to date? Oh my goodness. Um, So I just flew in from Breckenridge late last night. I was leading a retreat in the mountains with some amazing women. And, but one day was a free day for my retreat. So I took a solo hike up in this place above Breckenridge called Boreas Pass and Aspen Alley. And so the Aspens out there are just shimmering gold right now. It's incredible. And, um, I, after I found the trailhead, which, so it was a little challenging and I was like, I don't know where I am. Nobody's with me, you know? And, um, but I found this trailhead and I started hiking down and somebody was coming up and said, there's a moose right there. And I, I've seen moose in the distance before, but this one, we were like, this was a huge bull moose with some cows around. It's not the time of season you want to get between a bull and a cow right now. And <laughs> this thing was massive and crazy. And so, um, so it was just amazing. So I'm trying to hike down this mountain to the Valley of Breckenridge and then climb back up this hill. And here's this moose. So anyway, eventually, and I was solo hiking, but eventually there was another solo hiker and we were like, Hey, let's at least walk together. So the moose can't get us. I mean, his antlers were he was like bullwinkler. <laughs> so yeah. anyways, I love it. <laughs> so then we got it. We climbed kind of uphill and got around him and then hiked the other, you know, couple, three miles down into the valley and back up. So that was that was a pretty epic hike. It wasn't a backpacking hike where I was really going in, but the mountains and the aspens and oh, yeah, the huge moose I, <laughs> made it pretty, a- pretty amazing. 
A oh, couple of things fabulous. I love about that story. We had prepared this question before you had your epic experience, <laughs> and it just right. happened. And I love how you found a fellow traveler in that yes. moment. It's kind of yes. a, that's we, cool too. Yep, she was this wonderful, like thirty year old woman who had come in from Boulder specifically to hike this hike. So I felt very mm-hmm. lucky that I had chosen a hike that somebody will drive three hours for. And and yes, we shared all kinds of. Great things going down the mountain and back up together. Oh, that is great. That is great. Oh, wonderful. Um, okay, second question is, how would you describe yourself? Are you more of a morning person or an evening person? Kind of what time is your high energy time or your favorite time? My favorite time of day is really first thing in the morning. I have I have learned, and I'm not sure that I would say it's high energy, but it's absolutely high creativity. And so I um, kind of slip out of bed, and especially if I'm working on a writing project or something, and I just brew some coffee, and I can be writing within five minutes of getting out of bed. And it's like, it just pours out of me. And so I love that. Um, Even when I was working with teams and everything, I would block my days to where I didn't have any meetings in the morning because I knew that was my sweet creative time. And like this podcast, I can talk to people all day long, right? And so having meetings and things in the afternoons are just natural and fun. And so um, I'm definitely a morning person. Me too. I love morning. That's I've, my I've thing. changed. I, I used to be more evening, but I, I've come to love my mornings. Yeah. They're very yeah. important. Yeah. Well, nice. and like you, that's when I'm, my, um, my mind is open. I'm more creative. The thoughts just flow, right? I can really, mm-hmm. I can make a lot of headway in a very short period yes. of time in the morning, right? Cause yeah. I don't have yes. all the interruptions and the, you know, and so I, yeah. And I, and it's just my time to connect, to be quiet, mm-hmm. yes. get grounded and centered, right? Who I want to be that day and how I want to show up yes. and what's on the, Yeah. So it just, it helps. Yeah. Okay. So we're all three morning people. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. All right. The wrap up question. So one of the things that, you know, you're familiar with that we talk with leaders about is clarity intelligence and really helping them to understand how to leverage the tensions in their lives. And oftentimes, you know, the, the tensions, these poles are interdependent, but oftentimes we Mm -hmm. tend to have a preference Um, You know, we tend to lean a little bit more one way than another. Maybe that's due to our Enneagram. (laughs) Who knows, right? Who knows? Among other things, yes. Among other things, yeah. But we tend to, you know, have a prefer one pull more than the other. And there's nothing wrong with that. It just, we just want to be aware of it um, because we can have some blind spots to the benefits of the other pull, right? And it can keep us from expanding our perspective around that. So we wanted to just kind of get your thoughts about where your preference sits when it comes to fairness and forgiveness. What would be your preference, Paul? So to, to understand what you're asking me, so which do I prefer more of fairness or forgiveness? Okay, so first of all, you have to know my Enneagram type, um, as well as nines and ones, are all about justice. So I can smell injustice a mile away, and as the challenger, I am all for the underdog and the most vulnerable. So so fairness, fairness would, yeah. I'm all about fairness. Yeah, and yeah. Then well, that's that, Go ahead. Then the forgiveness comes in. Yeah. Then you know. Then I'll. But fairness all the way. Fair and fairness is not equal, right? So, yeah. so I'm not saying we should all be equal, but fairness right. is what does each person need in this moment to me? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that's just so. You know, like that's what I mean. It's so insightful, right? Because who we are at the core influences, us, and we might not even be aware of that. If we don't right. know these things about ourselves, right? If we don't know ourselves, we yes. may not understand yeah. why what our tendency is and why we lean that way naturally, right? And uh, and, and we yes. and I think you know most people see can see some level of benefit in both, right? And many people Correct. would yeah. go, well, I would have a hard time picking, right? Because I mm-hmm. I see the benefit right. of both, but we just 
typically tend to have that. So I yeah, it's and to so me playful. it's an instinct. Yeah. To me it's a right. So forgiveness to me is a little bit. I have to be really intentional and work toward it. Mm-hmm. Whereas fairness is like where I go. Whereas an Enneagram nine, the peacemaker would probably go toward forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. right away because they just, they want to yep. calm the waters. Everything's okay. Yep. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, maybe even you too, Michelle, as a, as a seven wanting to be like, yes. oh, nope, it's all okay. <laughs> so let's, let's make it okay. And then let's make it fair. So it's, it's more so instinct true. versus intellect. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Right. It's just your natural tendency. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. we need each other. We all need each other. Well, we do. (laughs) There's room for all of it. There's There's room for all of it. Yeah, definitely. I love that. Yes. Oh, wow. This was such a great conversation, Amy. Thank you so much for being here. And um I know we're going to be talking to you again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we are. My yeah. wheels are turning. Um, oh, yeah. And I'd love for you to tell our listeners uh, what your website is so they can hear it. And then we'll also put it in the show notes in case they're interested in looking and doing an assessment. Yeah. Excellent. So my website is venwise.com. So like Venn diagram, V-E-N-N-Wise.com. And right. yes, Great. I would love... Love for people to reach out to me there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put that link in the show notes. So. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, it's just been fabulous. So enjoyed this. So insightful. I've got a lot more things to think about mm-hmm. when it comes to my number and just kind of, you know, my natural tendencies. And so thank you so much for your insights today. Well, thank yeah. you to both of you. Um, this has really been so much fun. And threes and eights and sevens are like, very dynamic together. So, yeah. So yeah. let's get together and do some things. <laughs> let's do that. I agree. Let's okay, do it. Let's this do has it. been let's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Amy. Love that. And for all of our listeners okay. out there, thank you for joining another episode of Healthcare's Missing Logic podcast. And we'll see you next week. Yeah. Stay safe. Stay healthy. you enjoyed this episode of healthcare's missing logic podcast now a top rated podcast for healthcare leaders please share this podcast with other healthcare leaders and anyone else you think would benefit we are certain that if you found value in it they will too if you haven't already done so please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any episodes and also it would mean the world to us if you took a quick moment to leave a rating and review on apple Podcasts, stitcher or your favorite podcast player. It helps to get the word out about our podcast and incredible guests. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to watch our podcasts. You can also follow us on our Missing Logic social media channels, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Until next time.